By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at my mono blue deck with the Timmy's against Atok Red. So that's a pretty good start with a Sol Ring there, turn one. Oh, look at this! This is crazy. Well, we got three mocks in here on the battlefield. There is the um, the tablet and the Ankh of Mishra. Oh, and this is pain. Taking the first damage there. Oh, wow. What a start there for the uh, red Atok deck. Can you imagine an Atok coming on the field now? So I guess I need mana open to counter if he's going to play an Atok. And he is. Can I counter here? Tap the double and there's a counter spell. I mean, it would be disastrous for me having this blue deck to allow him to be able to cast at Atok. Um, playing a Ivory Tower here, so that will kind of help me to get some life back. There's another Atok. And the problem here is as well, since he has so many mana with the Moxen, my power sinks are pretty much useless. Um, so that's also a side effect. So no second counter spell for me here. So I have to accept the Atok, hoping maybe on a Maze of If. But there's no maze, there's no land, there's nothing. Um, I don't see an out here for me, even though it's very early in the game. There's an Atok coming in there for the damage. And taking it here, going to eight, taking away a land because he's sacking it. It went really quickly, but he sacked uh, three artifacts, I believe. So I'm on 8 life now, he's still on 13, well 12 now with the tablet. Problem is if I play Lance I go down even further. And I go to 7. And the question is, is he going to sacrifice something here? And I'm going back to 8 with the Ivory Tower. He's on 11. But I'm not really, I'm not really into this game. I haven't been in this game from the start. Uh, going down to seven again with the Atok, playing Orcish mechanics there. Going to nine because of the tower. Finally finding that Maze of If, so maybe that can help me a little bit. At least I can stop the Atok. But it seems to be a. a too little, too late. I'm sending back the Atok, taking a damage from the mechanics, going down to six, gaining some life probably again with the Ivory Tower. And I'm going to eight here. So I'm not dead yet, but I mean, can I stabilize? Remember, the Orcish Mechanics is a card from the Antiquities, and it's a 1-1 one, one Orc, but it can tap, and, it, and then you sack an Artifact, and it deals 2 damage to me. So I'm playing a land here, and again, it's dealing damage because of the Ankh of Mishra. There's a Lightning Bolt. Am I going to counter this one? Yeah, I'm going to play Spell Blast here. Countering the Bolt does mean I have no ability anymore to counter in his uh, during his turn. I mean, it all looks very fragile, just being on six life, having that mechanic. So the mechanic can tap your second artifact and you deal two damage to your opponent. So he has some artifacts there. And attacking with both again. So I'm taking a damage from the mechanic, sending back the Atok, obviously, gaining some life from the tower back to six. Now, what can I do here? Just passing turn, trying to get some more life out of that tower. And there's a black vice. Uh, yuck. That's not ideal. Black Vice, Ivory, they kind of cancel each other out, but then I still have that tablet that's dealing one damage a turn and putting me on a six turn clock here. Well, it's much worse actually, because he can deal damage with his creatures as well, and he can throw artifacts to my face with that Orcish mechanics. For now I'm going to five, going to four because of the tablet, not gaining any life because of the Black Vice, so I have to kind of empty my hand, but if I play a land, I lose two life. Playing a brain, brainstorm. I'm not sure a brain geyser, sorry. I'm not sure if a brain geyser is going to help me here. I guess it, I mean, I guess it can do no harm since I have the uh, ivory tower there as well. Maybe I'm looking for a second ivory tower. 
trying to gain some life, maybe an extra mace of if, but remember every land I play is two damage as well. And there's a chain lightning going down to one and that's it, that's the game. And no chance, I had no chance. So let's just quickly go on to the second game and see um, you know, if I can, if it can be a little bit, if my deck can be a little bit more competitive in game number two. Game number two. So let's see if I can do something here in the second game. I have my doubts after seeing that first one. Hopefully Bjorn, his start won't be as explosive as in that first game. And I'll get some more time to set up my spells and get some counters going. So let's see. At least I'm on the play. Playing an island, passing turn here. There's a Mox Ruby into a chain lightning interesting down to 17 and there seems to be no land coming there from Bjorn. and i'm playing a felwer stone which is useless at this moment because there is no lands on the side of Bjorn. another well another i won't say this is a lightning bolt another chain so lightning bolt going down to 14 still only one mana source here and how sweet would it be if i could get rid of that ruby but i can't playing a second desert and oh this is nice playing a spell blast over the mox pearl so I can do that for zero because Mox Pearl casting cost is zero. And in the meanwhile, there has been another lightning bolt. So I'm on 11. So look at this. He only has one. I'm on eight. He only has one mana source, which is Mox Ruby. But I'm on eight and he's on 20. And my deck is just so slow. It's so slow. And I'm now playing a Sinbad. I wonder what I'm going to do with this. Uh, and he seems to just pass. It's kind of giving me a free turn. And I'm getting an island there from the Sinbad activation. Playing with, I believe, 25 lands in my blue deck. So when I'm using the Sinbad, there's a pretty pretty good percentage that I'll find an, a land to draw. Ooh, and this is not ideal because he's playing a Winter Orb. So that means I kind of cannot use my Jadam Tome. I was hoping to use it to get some more card advantage. And now I'm kind of stuck. And I wonder if I should just attack with the Simbad. Although it's just one damage, it's still a damage here instead of digging for more lands. Um, there's a tablet in play. Not ideal. I'm on seven here. And can you believe this? I mean, he started off with one single Mox Ruby and somehow he's dealing the damage. And I'm just kind of like unable to really pose a threat here for Bjorn's deck. And he's on 17, but he's starting to find some lands, playing an Atok. I wonder if I'm going to counter this because I have a Maze of If, but then again, he has the um, Winter Orb. Anyway, I'm choosing not to, or I don't have a counter spell. I can't really remember, actually. Taking a damage here from the tablet, going down to six. I think if I would have had a counter spell, I would have countered the Atok. Um, Tapping here because my Felwer Stones are active now with that mountain. And I'm playing an Ivory Tower. So this can kind of help me to neutralize damage from the tablet and taking me off that clock because I'm already on six life. The Chain Lightnings and Lightning Bolts have done so much damage. And together with that tablet, he's brought me back to, brought me down to six life. And I think when you're playing an aggressive red deck and you're on six, the game's kind of over. Oh, and there's an Orcish Mechanics. Wow, interesting. So that mechanics, just like in the first game, he can he can use it, he can tap it, second artifact, and deal two damage. So next turn, it won't have summoning sickness anymore, and he can start using it. So I'm still gaining a little bit of life from the ivory tower. I don't think it's going to be enough, but hey, as long as you're not dead, you're still in the game. I'm on seven. I have to win this one, because I already lost the first game to get that third game going. But Bjorn's deck simply looks too strong at this point. He is taking a lot of damage here, three damage because two from the mana volts and one from the tablet. So he is going down to 12. Attacking with the Atok, having to use the mace, playing another Atok. Am I going to counter? I feel like I have to here. Yes, I'm going to play a counter spell. I had no choice. Finding another land, a desert, which is really nice. Like this combination of Simbat and Ivory Tower is quite nice. I'm gaining an extra life. So despite the fact that a tablet's on the battlefield, I'm still gaining a little bit of life because of that ivory tower and that Simbat uh, land draw there. Playing an island. And I, I just wish the Winter Orb was not on the battlefield because then I could just freely use my, my Jadum Tome, probably finding counter spells and whatnot to control the game. I also play with a few... Um, uh, control magic so I could have taken over the orcish mechanics for instance in this case it's not going to work and and what he's doing right now is using the orcish mechanics to get rid of his mana volts that are actually hurting him 
and hurting me with them instead. So again, finding a land there with that Simbad. So Simbad's doing a lot of work in this game. I'm tapping an island, gaining some life, but I'm I'm down on I'm on seven, and with those mechanics, I don't see it happen. On the other hand, Bjorn is now on ten. So if somehow I can stretch this match, playing a soul ring there, and he's throwing another mana vault at my face, completely understandable. That means I take another two damage. I'm on five life. And with the tablets there as well, it's two tablets. And, and if he can't hurt me with the tablets, at least he can throw them to my face and, and deal. That's four more damage there. And he plays a second Orcish Mechanics. So, and I'm digging for cards here. I'm activating my book at the end of his turn. I'm activating my Simbat at the end of his turn. Then I go to my untap step. And in my upkeep, I put my Ivory Tower trigger on the stack. And I'm probably going to try to activate my Simbat again, trying to gain life. That's all I want to do right now. So I have to stay alive. That's my main MO here. So we're still in my upkeep here. And I'm thinking, am I going to activate my book here using my four mana? Probably meaning I cannot play out any other spell for that life from the Ivory Tower. Personally, I think that I should first just activate my Simbat and see if I can find a land. But I choose to play the Tome first. Again, I think now I'm thinking about the Simbat probably. Because I should use the Simbat before that trigger goes off. Yeah, we're discussing it now. So I'm using the Simbat. Finding a land, great, so getting an extra life. So I'm on eight, but everything is stabbed out. And that Winter Orb is just, it's uh, its making it so difficult to kind of deal with your mana sources and deal with your Mace of If. I mean, I have to untap my Mace of If every single turn to stop that ATOC. Um, so I really, Bjorn is in control. We're both on eight, by the way, um, which I think is interesting because I haven't i have not dealt him any damage. So this is all self-inflicted damage there from Bjorn. And he's throwing another tablet to my face. That means he's not taking that damage. So it's kind of double. He's gaining a life and I'm losing two life. And when you're having a life race like this, that can be very decisive. So I'm on six. He's on seven. And at this stage, I'm kind of surprised I'm still alive, to be honest. Um, sending back his ATOC. He's throwing his ruby. He's throwing his tablet to me. I'm on 10. There's a lightning bolt. And that is it. And that's why I said I'm surprised I'm still alive. Because when you're playing against a red deck and you're like, you're below 10, an aggressive deck like this, you know it's time to start to worry. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Bjorn. I guess an easy victory here. 0-2 for the Atok deck. Well done. And it was really nice to see those Orcish mechanics. I mean, what a cool card. I, I do feel they're a little bit too expensive to cast. But what a cool card. So thank you for this game. And thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. If you'd like to see more games, you can click on the links appearing right now. Or check out the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. It's very much appreciated. Subscribe, subscribe if you're not a sub yet. I'm hoping to reach 400 subs later this week. Thank you for watching this episode. And see you next time. Ik het was fikker te somber gezien.